Good morning. Um, welcome everyone to this uh, event where we celebrate Digital India Week. I'm thankful to Professor Mazumdar, Dean R&D, for agreeing to uh, chair this uh, uh, event. I also um, am thankful to Professor Fartek uh, for being in the city today. <laughs> <laughs> and, and also agreeing to be with us. <laughs> Okay, so what we will do is we will first uh, inaugurate this and we have an electronic way to do it. Digital way. Digital is electronics. Okay. <laughs> I, I invite Professor Madhavan to come and light a lamp. Yes. Hmm. Yeah, yeah. Mr. Arun Kalwankar, please come. What should I do? Just press on it. Number two. No, no. This is not touch screen. You have to use the. Yeah, please come. Just press the two again. No, it's doing something else. Hold on one second. I am from the non-digital era. That's the problem. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Dr. Saraswati, please come. Can we ask one of the students to come? Kendri Vidyala students, please come. Fine, do it for five. Yeah, click that. Okay, good. Okay, I request Professor Fartek to. Professor Fartek, please complete it. We have an outside, we have an expert from outside. Please come. Our partner. Thank you. Um, so thank you. I think we can get started. Actually, it's a very brief. Uh, um, Kind of formal session, we have time till 12 only here. After 12, we go and see the stalls. So I think that gives about 45 minutes. Um, I will give a brief overview of the, the plans that we have to celebrate Digital India Week all over the country. More than 100 institutions are participating. I'll give a quick overview. It may take about uh, maybe 5 to 10 minutes. After that, I will ask each of the PIs to uh, stand in wherever they are and then summarize because we don't have time for this. And I would also like to get feedback from some of the partner institutions who might have come from the city, maybe from the school, maybe from colleges. I would want them to share uh, some of their experiences. And then we will go to uh, the stalls. Okay. And the stalls, we will also have, uh, we have ordered uh, some snacks so we can eat and watch. Okay? <laughs> so with that, uh, let me just, uh, so the, I will uh, first give a brief uh, outline of what we plan to do. Then we will ask Professor Fatak to um, uh, share his thoughts. And then we will ask um, uh, Professor Mazumdar uh, to give a, uh, speech, and then we will have a presentation by uh, uh, PIs. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 
So first of all, I would like to begin by saying that all these things could not have happened but for the excellent environment given by IIT Bombay. So starting with thanks. I also want to talk about CD. Uh, CD head could not be here, so he asked me to uh, speak on his behalf. Uh, CD is the nodal agency, that's the outreach agency that is coordinating many of our projects. And uh, uh, I had the opportunity to be the head of CD some time ago. And uh, we will actually see a CDEEP stall. Um, the, I considered CDEEP's mandate to make available whatever knowledge that IIT Bombay creates to the outside world, especially in classrooms. Whatever we do, as a matter of fact, we still do uh, transmission, live transmission of courses. We, we created more than 100 courses by uh, live, uh, by uh, lecture by faculty members who delivered for their students at IIT Bombay in a studio but live that people from anywhere in the world could have received that. Okay, So more than 100 such courses, more than 5000 hours were transmitted. It is still being done. Okay, So that is CD. I would also want to mention education technology uh, program that we have at IIT Bombay. It's a unique program. We have lots of new technologies coming into educational field. How relevant are they? How effective are they? Are they useful or not? So education technology is a, an, uh, is a unique program that has only PhDs. Okay? We have about 25 PhD students. And as a matter of fact, we are unable to recruit, unable to um, admit more PhD students because of shortage of faculty members who will guide them. Because all education technology faculty members are overloaded and we are on the lookout for outstanding people to join us, faculty members, in the ET program. I will do some sales speech also. <laughs> okay? But this is an amazing program because you know, when you introduce slides, when you introduce clickers, when you introduce something else, flip method, how do you know that it is going to be useful? Are students going to learn it or not? So it is extremely important. We are starting with PhD. Hopefully, we'll go to masters. We'll worry about bachelors later. The next uh, program that really helped do many of these things is the National Mission on Education through ICT, which is the mission of uh, MHRD. Uh, many of our projects are funded by this mission. It is, in fact, one can say that the funding from this mission and the enthusiastic support given by its, uh, the founder of this mission, Mr. N.K. Sinha, uh, gave the impetus to do a lot of the things that we are doing. We have a total of 300 staff members at uh, IIT Bombay who are directly employed by this uh, mission, by the funding by this mission. And of course, thanks to IRCC, thanks to Dean R&D's office, that is able to actually provide the support for all the 300 people. It's a humongous job. It's a huge job. Okay, I wanted to acknowledge this. Then we will get on with um, a summary of what we expect to organize. This is only a partial list. More people are giving their inputs. So um, these are the projects. We'll come to them later. T10KT, uh, the event organized by T10KT, uh, train 10,000 teachers. Uh, they plan to conduct a two-hour session with some of the 300 remote center centers of T10KT tomorrow, 11 to 1. Ekalpa uh, is organizing an animation workshop uh, by IDC. We have IDC uh, faculty members. Excuse me. Let me just uh, mute it. Okay, I think. Uh, I did that before coming here. Yeah, I, I had uh, no time. You will see why so if you see this slide. Okay. I was busily preparing this in the morning. Okay. Uh, so E Kalpa is the uh, is a project that uh, uh, is uh, coordinated by faculty members at IDC. 
uh, they um, organize an animation workshop. Uh, is it on 5th? It's tomorrow, on 4th. It's on 5th. OK, I'll, st I'll correct this. Um, similar workshops will be conducted by uh, their partners at IIT Gauhati and NID. Uh, E-Antra plans to have an open house during uh, 11, PM, 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. on 4th July 2015. Events organized by FOSI, a mega hands-on Scilab Arduino workshop during uh, 3rd, 4th July 2015. Is that correct? I think it is correct. 3rd, 4th, that is tomorrow, day after tomorrow. And then there are 150 people who are participating in this workshop where they will work with uh, Arduino boards and Scilab and so on. Our partner uh, institution, uh, FOSI um, at IIT Karakpur, uh, headed by Professor Raji Mal, head of computer science at IIT Karakpur, is uh, planning a mega free and open source software tools for software engineering at uh, C.V. Raman College of Engineering, Bhubaneswar. Um, a spoken tutorial workshop for KV students of IIT Bombay is organized uh, on 6th July, Monday, from 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. Now I'm going to give a brief uh, summary, summary of what we have planned for the uh, rest of the country. Uh, this is being done by the Spoken Tutorials project. I am really surprised that they could pull it together, put it together in a short span of two days. Okay? There are totally 85 colleges in 23 states, all confirmed. Uh, in fact, we even have the names of the coordinators, their email address, phone number, all that. I don't want to share those details here. They will celebrate Digital India Week in their colleges and then they will publicize it. Okay? So this is extremely important. This is something I wanted to say, but uh, maybe I'll leave it to uh, Professor uh, um, Fatak and uh, Professor Mazumdar to uh, explain why this uh, digital in digital technology and all these things are extremely important. So I will not uh, talk about it. So these are some of the colleges that are uh, doing this. I won't even read them out, I'll, but I'll flash them for each slide for about five seconds. Andhra Pradesh, Assam, Bihar, Chhattisgarh. We have many colleges from Chhattisgarh. Delhi, Gujarat, Haryana, Himachal Pradesh. So in all these colleges, our partner is conducting a workshop. It could be for uh, conducting a workshop that is being planned here on 6th for the KV students, something like that. Or it could be for um, to explain to people how this methodology works. And uh, they will call the nearby colleges and uh, their own students and so on. Jharkhand, Karnataka, Kerala. Madhya Pradesh, Maharashtra. I'm happy that we are doing something in Maharashtra for some time. I, I used to think that we should be doing a lot more for Maharashtra being in Maharashtra. But I think uh, now our Maharashtra coordinators are doing well. Uh, rather, people in Maharashtra are responding to our coordinators. Of course, we also believe, uh, somebody told me that people don't participate because we don't contact the right people. There are people who want to join and we don't contact the right people. So anyway, whatever it is, we have a good number. Maharashtra, Meghalaya, Odisha, Pondicherry, small uh, place, Punjab, Rajasthan, Tamil Nadu, Telangana, Uttar Pradesh, Uttarakhand. Uttarakhand, um, although it's a small state and uh, in fact uh, ravaged by floods, they have come in a big way. For some of these states, that are um, ecologically fragile, the digital technology is extremely important, extremely useful, uh, can give jobs to the local uh, children without uh, much damage to the environment. So it's, uh, I'm really happy that Uttarakhand has come in a big way, and West Bengal. So we have a total of about 23 states. I've included uh, Pondicherry and uh, um, Delhi also in that. Um, and then 86 colleges. This is a confirmed list. Uh, we will have a similar list, for example, the remote centers of T10KT and 
uh, all these things are going to appear on our uh, website. Not sure whether internet is working, but I'll just show you where it is going to be available. Let me just go to hrdgov.in. So this is the MHRD homepage. Okay, and then uh, let's see how do I maximize this. Mm -hmm. F11. F11. Okay, good. Yeah, so here it is. So this is our banner. Uh, that we created for uh, uh, HRD. So this is where uh, all the details are there. In this page, we will actually update. Um, uh, if you see events, something will come, workshops, something will come, and you know, so on and so forth. And if you click any of this, it will further take you to, for example, if I click NPTEL, it will take you to NPTEL page. Okay. Okay. Now what do I do? F1 again, F11. Okay. So one can go to MHRD homepage and then reach that uh, details page. So we will update this list. As I told you, T10 KT is doing it in um, several places. 300 of the remote centers have been called. After the function is over, we will know exactly how many people are coming. It's actually a very short uh, notice. Number one, number two, it's vacation time. Many people are not around, so we are not able to get the exact. Uh, numbers. Similarly, Virtual Labs is doing it in many places and uh, so on. Now I'll request uh, uh, about a uh, five minute summary from the PAs of uh, projects. Now hold on, before we go to that, let's uh, get uh, Professor Fartak's uh, thoughts on the function itself and then we will ask uh, Professor Mazumdar to talk and then we will go to that. Thank you, Professor Kannan. Everybody knows how important uh, digital technologies are and how critical, in fact, they are for the emerging pedagogy of effective education. Uh, the Digital India Week actually epitomizes the will and the commitment of the entire nation, starting with the Honorable Prime Minister, that we have to do something extraordinary over coming decades. Combine this determination with two facts. One, the huge diversity that we have, but we have a great digital divide. You people are all fortunate, we are all fortunate who live in cities and have had the fortune of studying using English medium much of our education, which means the plethora of knowledge that is available on internet in English is accessible to all of us. There are a large number of students across the country who still study in their native languages in these schools. And up to their 12th standard, they are denied access to much valuable information. This digital divide has to be bridged. Additionally, there are still a very large number of children who are not in any education system, either in the lower education or after passing out school, not in the higher education. The number of people who want to learn not just skills, but get proper education, etc. too many. And therefore, education technology, as Professor Kannan mentioned, is going to be critical. Add to it the new onslaught that is happening of massive open online courses, which is actually disrupting education system. It has made people to think a lot. I will just leave two thoughts with you. Currently, all of us study in a fixed duration, syllabus-based course or program. What is the sanctity of taking four years to do a B.Tech? If I am a laggard and a slow learner, I want to learn, let us say, first course in programming over one year. And if Professor Kaviare is teaching that course, I go to him and I say, Sir, please permit me one year. He'll say, no, this is a semester course. You can get one year provided you fail in this course and repeat this course next semester. Suppose there is another student who has studied programming in 11th and 12th standard and wishes to say, give me these six grades, I'll do something else. 
He is told, no, this is part of the core program, you must do it. If I say, please take me my exam and permit me to skip all the classes, I am told by Professor Kavi Arya that 85% attendance is compulsory. Now, from such rigid framework of education, the education is quickly moving where people are defining smaller conceptual modules. Even in India, uh, Professor Uday Desai, our colleague as director of IIT Hyderabad, has started offering courses which are three credit courses, two credit courses, one credit courses and half credit courses. And these could be accumulated either quickly or at your own pace to assemble the requisite knowledge for a certain field. Now, if this is going to be the direction where education is moving, it is very important that modern education technologies are adopted increasingly by the institutions, by the learners, by everyone. Towards that end, I will only mention that the <coughs> MOOCs which we run from IIT Bombay under IIT Bombay X will actually be offered in a blended MOOCs mode where students of 50 institutions who have joined this program <coughs> will actually be teaching their students using their local teaching as well as these MOOCs. And the marks that these students will be given in that subject <coughs> will, be a <coughs> will be a combination of marks scored in the local assessment and marks scored on the MOOCs offered by IIT Bombay. This, I believe, is the first in the world globally where 50 institutions are participating. Such experiments and such initiatives are important. Equally important are the efforts to get affordable technology in place. You might have heard of Akash project. It was not an innovation in great technology, but it was innovation in making that technology affordable, more usable by creating a large amount of open source content and applications. And such technologies have to become ubiquitous. Network is being built across the country by the government. But the devices will probably come either from the institutions or from the commercial markets. Professor Kannan has extended the Akash by, using, uh, by providing a design of a very low-cost, affordable netbook computer, which I believe will be showcased somewhere here. I am very happy and proud that IIT Bombay, thanks to the uh, support that we get from the institute, has been able to do a whole lot of things, ET being a unique program, as he said. But a lot more is to be done. And I would only suggest that those of you who are sitting here, whom, as I said, are more fortunate, have a responsibility to contribute to this effort in whichever way you can. Whether you propose to join the spoken tutorial group, whether you propose to join this activity, whether you propose to popularize any activity, whether you wish to write to your friends in other places to participate, but it's very, very important that the Digital India Week is used as a starting point to empower not just one individual or few individuals, but the entire 1.2 billion population of this country. Thank you so much. That's all I say. Good morning and welcome. We have gathered here to celebrate this uh, Digital India Week. And I thought, what better way to celebrate this in IIT Bombay uh, than, you know, showcasing our contributions to Digital India through the projects, all the projects of uh, this mission supported by MHRD. I think uh, that is the most ideal way. Uh, the education and R&D, these are the two major pillars of our activities. And uh, our institute's motto says that whatever we do, you know, this is uh, it's something which makes a difference to whatever, you know, various segments of the society, industry, and of course, in terms of knowledge generation the world over. Uh, while, of course, the impact of R&D is something which is uh, usually long term, seen maybe significantly later, sometimes, sometimes of course immediate. but. The impact of education is second to second, minute to minute, hour to hour, all the time, you know, there. And uh, I think the, the kind of impact that uh, we have made, the social impact, uh, through this, these mission projects, all of them, uh, I think is something which is really extremely noteworthy. And uh, I think it is not, I think when the mission was formulated, you know, that of course the vision of the government, 
and uh, MHRD. And we have, I think, uh, sort of thrown us into it wholeheartedly and I really appreciate the boldness of uh, the entire faculty group to have actually taken up this mantle, which is something which is not very easy, not very conventional and what you do. And under the strong leadership of both uh, Professor Fatak, Professor Mautgalya and uh, all of the other faculty members who are involved here. And of course, creating this entire, you know, for the last five years, this uh, ecosystem for having achieved what we have today through, of course, the project staff who have worked on it, the students, all other our external partners and guests who are here today, and all of our you know, various uh, institutions and centers all over we have. Uh, yesterday, our Prime Minister, Sri Narendra Modi, had inaugurated the Digital India program as such, and as well as the Di Digital India Week. I think his vision for uh, digital India is a complete, you know, countrywide digital connectivity and the major attributes of uh, this vision are both in terms of digital infrastructure, digital services and governance and more importantly, of course, empowerment, digital empowerment. And in terms of these attributes, I see our project having contributed and will continue to contribute in the next phases also. To all of these, we have created digital infrastructure through, you know, you mentioned Akash, the, and not only that, not, not only the devices, but this entire infrastructure created around the centers around the country to, to participate in the delivery of these e-services, where basically the services are e-education. And uh, the entire management of this, uh, this complete ecosystem is itself a digital on a digital platform. And uh, the digital empowerment is through the e-learning and e-content that we are generating. So I think we have, uh, you know, contributed, of course, along with other institutions in the country. But I'm sure, as an IIT Bombay person, I'm, I'm <laughs> I know that you know we we have contributed a notch more. And I think we have shown some some of the leadership, uh, you know, very strong leadership, both uh, in the in defining the program as well as you know you know taking it uh, to the doorstep. And a key, again, attribute in terms of the stakeholders is of uh, Digital India really is, as uh, Professor Patak mentioned, accessibility being one of the most key things. And the other is a kind of doorstep delivery or anytime, anywhere kind of uh, uh, this thing. And uh, I think in that also we have, uh, you know, that is uh, sort of a, a base for the work that we are doing here. So I think with these uh, words, I'm very happy to be here to inaugurate this uh, Digital India Week, and I hope we'll have more programs both under the um, NMEICT projects umbrella and maybe others uh, from the institute. Of course, in terms of the uh, you know day to day, we have, our life is almost becoming like e-life. Of course, I I hope it doesn't com completely encompass us. There's much more to life than e. So e-life e or e-digital, you know, part of our lives is only something which makes everything very convenient. I think I don't have to say, you know, what that is. We are all enjoying the fruits of that, but a huge number of people still are in the old non-digital world. And I'm, I come from the, non, as uh, <laughs> Professor Madhavan was also saying that, I also, from my student days and early, you know, faculty days, have seen only a non-digital world. Uh, so we know, you know, what, what the others will go through. And so it's our uh, mandate that we should work towards, uh, you know, enabling this so that we, the fruits are with everyone. Uh, I think uh, with those words. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Um, okay, as promised, uh, we didn't take more than 15 minutes. Um, that's as per plan. Uh, we still have to, um, so we will have five minutes. I actually forgot to include uh, virtual labs here. Uh, Professor Santosh Narona will hopefully come at, towards the end, so we'll ask him to present at the time. Um, so what I will uh, uh, ask, what I will ask the PIs to do is uh, to uh, speak briefly. You don't have to stick to the five minutes; it can be shorter than that. You can uh, because uh, the stalls are there outside, and we would actually want to give more time 
for people. Not everybody is interested in every project. So there will be people who will be interested only in e -antra, somebody only in NPTEL. So let them go and then spend more time there. That's the idea. We'll shorten this. So what I would suggest is we'll still stick to five minutes. But during the five minutes, if each PI can ask their staff members to stand up so that people can see who they are, even though you will not get a chance to talk. And then if you can also use this opportunity for, um, in case your partners have come from the city, ask them to say one or two sentences. Okay? If we, if we have lots of visitors, then it will not fit into five minutes. It will exceed a little bit, but we can accommodate that. So with that, I will ask uh, Professor Fatak, uh, as the PA of T10KT, to start this. This program is essentially about training teachers on large scale. The name T10KT implies that we can train up to 10,000 teachers simultaneously in a two-week rigorous program. This model has evolved over several years. It has been perfected. It has been found very effective. So basically, these 10,000 teachers don't assemble at IIT Bombay. They assemble at one of the 300 remote centers. At each place, about 30, 40 teachers come. To all of them, interactive lectures are delivered in the morning sessions from IIT Bombay or IIT Karakpur or our partners. In the afternoon, these assembled teachers uh, are taken through tutorials and lab assignments locally under the supervision of a local workshop coordinator. To ensure that these labs and tutorials are conducted with the same rigor with which we conduct them in IIT, we do one more thing. Before this workshop, two months before, we assemble all the workshop coordinators from remote centers physically at IIT Bombay for one week exclusive training program. And we make them do the same labs and same tutorials as we do, do them in IIT. This ensures that the program is run very rigorously at other places. Additionally, we have quizzes and assignments for participating teachers and a team assignment to be completed after this workshop. Only after that, they are given a certificate. We have trained over one lakh teachers in the last two years in, under this program. And we have a mandate to train one lakh fifty thousand teachers in three years, which we'll do. We are increasingly move, moving towards a self-sustenance mode because the costs are important. The normal cost of training a teacher is about 14,000 rupees per participant for a two-week program. Our costs are 6,200 as approved, but we manage them in 5,000 rupees. And using the digital mechanisms, we are converting this two-week program into part online and part face-to-face, -face, further reducing the cost. We believe that this training program could be used for teachers' training, not only in engineering colleges, but in other colleges, high schools, polytechnics, etc. This model will go on. So may I request that T10KT staff members, our workshop team is led by Dr. Mukta Atre. I thought I saw her somewhere. Yeah, Mukta is there. And uh, uh, Mahendra, all the team members who work on T10KT, can they stand at their place? Uh, Rachna, yeah. So we have a large team because, you know, you have to handle 10,000 people at a time. They have done that very effectively. So thanks to all the staff members. Uh, <laughs> we are now, I mentioned the blended MOOCs course. The MOOCs project, although it's a separate project technically, but it's blended with our T10KT because with every MOOCs that we offer, we offer a blended MOOC workshop for teachers on how to use such MOOCs program. So that program is also being led by, unfortunately, that entire team is busy working with summer interns who have come from various institutions and who are building additional systems for us. Uh, Akash project, as I mentioned, has concluded and Professor Kannan is still taking it forward in the terms of providing low-cost, affordable access uh, to people using them. That's all. Thank you. Yeah, you can sit Thank you. Um, e is a digital learning environment for design in India. And it's known by uh, uh, its website is dsource.in. So don't look for e Please look for dsource.in. It's in partnership with uh, between IDC at IIT Bombay and uh, Department of Design at IIT Guwahati and NID Bangalore. 
It's an open access resource that can be accessed via your tablet or mobile. And we have courses on, uh, yes, oh, good. <laughs> you can see that. So we have courses, resources, case study, showcase gallery, and videos. Currently, um, the content is created through expert contributions and also some crowdsourcing. And we are really open to having more partnerships and, you know, you can please popularize this, publicize it so that we can have more partners in this effort. We have created so far 100 courses to 50 resources and we intend to double this. And in addition, we want to, we plan to add workshops, exhibitions, quizzes, and competitions in the next year so that, you know, it becomes more interactive and people can actually see how they have fared in the uh, course and things like that. And um, just to share that how we have been using it. So uh, recently, uh, there was a workshop with library uh, educators. And they were from uh, small libraries in you know, uh, schools all over Maharashtra, Gujarat, Rajasthan, Madhya Pradesh. This was an event organized by the Tata Trust and uh, Bookworm Goa. So we introduced uh, this idea to the school librarians because in the library they, they don't only you know uh, teach, uh, I mean just show books and things like that. They also do certain activities. So they were really surprised that such a thing exists, you know. And oh, it is free. We we don't have to pay for this. <coughs> this is something that uh, not many. We are trying to publicize this through social network and things like that, but. We are looking for, you know, more people to participate. So please feel free to access. Thank, Thank you. you. Can I have 50 seconds more? I just forgot to introduce. I just realized I forgot to mention two things. Although the technical MOOCs team is busy making presentations, I just saw Parak Tiwari, who heads the uh, MOOCs content and uh, uh, software kind of thing, and also. I mentioned MOOCs, but I forgot to mention that MOOCs are also meant for not just higher education courses, but vocational courses and even school education courses. And one of the offerings in the coming semester is a vocational course on Blender animation. I realized it when you were speaking. Uh, so Dr. Sabir Sahasrabuddha is here. He is the main teacher. He ditched us and joined tests, but we might still want to get him back here any time. We are working on collaboration, and that course is launched as we speak uh, among the MOOCs courses. That's all I wanted to add. Can I ask this? Yeah, you want to this one in the middle. So the resource team, please. <laughs> not everyone is here. It's yeah, a much larger team. <laughs> and Ravi is not here. Ravi is a chief PI. He's not okay. here today. Thanks. Yeah, Ravi is not So we'll have here, huh? Thanks. Um, this relates to um, this relates to make in India. Who will make in India? Um, do our students have the practical skills to make in India? So what Iyantra has been doing is this has come out of the teaching of an embedded systems course at IIT Bombay, where we had a lot of luck with students. If you gave them a robot and made them program and do things with it, they learnt a lot and learnt very very fast and were self motivated. Then we put it out in open source and says. Everybody will want to take it or want it and so on, but nothing happens. So we felt the need to evangelize. So we are doing that through the Iyantra project, which is uh, an NME ICT uh, project now. So what we are doing is that uh, three limbs. We enthuse students by uh, letting them participate in a national robotics competition. right? So we, we, we define problems which they can solve with a homegrown robot. And we are happy to say that this is growing at an exponential rate. First year, 4,500 students, next year, 6,500, 12,500 students in the last year. So we've caught on to a nerve there, basically. Yes. Okay. Um, so that's one thing, a robotics competition, and the winners come to IIT Bombay for internships. And we have 32 interns. Are any of them here? Yeah. Right? A few of them are here, but most of them will be around the uh, kiosk that we have here. Then we have something called the ELSI, which is Eantra Labs Setup Initiative, which sets up labs in an engineering college. 
if a college is willing to invest a bit of money, volunteer four teachers to be trained. We train the teachers up, set the labs up in about four to five months, right? And that has been working very well. Uh, our target is about 500 labs in the next two years. We've already done 107 all over the country. And these will end up being innovation hubs, right? And then we have a symposium which we organize every year where the teachers come and we share with them best practices and stuff like that. So that's what we do. We are trying to spread this notion of project-based learning through a variety of means and through an open source environment with robots. And uh, if uh, my uh, colleague here, Dr. Saraswati, who's managing the project, has a word to say about this, then I'll let her speak and then I'll let our uh, few staff that we have here stand up and address you. Just a word. Yeah, uh, the only thing I would like to add is uh, we focus on the sustainability aspect of a project. So it's not enough, we believe that it's not enough to do something, you want to measure the impact and you want it to be available, you know, used in the long run, even after the project closes, for instance. So th with that in mind, what we have done is to create these ecosystems in the colleges. So the teachers become the experts, the lab is there, and they can add on to the lab year after year. And also this E-Anthra Symposium, we introduce what is called the E-Anthra Ideas Competition, where we are making sure that the labs that are established in the 107 colleges are used for new BE projects in the area of embedded systems and robotics. So that competition involves a, a team of four students managed, mentored by a teacher. So we are doing a lot of things that feed into each other and we are hoping that in the long run the project gives a sustainable impact and the whole thing is very scalable. Thank you. Yeah, uh, the team please stand up. Thank you very much. Any uh, FOSSE PIs here? Professor Madhu Belur. Okay, never mind. I will uh, talk about FOSSE also. I am. Uh, the main PA of this project is Prof Professor Prabhu Ramachandran, uh, but I have been, I am a co-PA of this project. Um, so FOSSE stands for Free and Open Source. Yeah, it stands for Free and Open Source Software for Education. Uh, when we started this project, we said that a lot of open source software is already available, but people don't know how to use them. So can we spend some time to uh, publicize this, teach people how to use it, and so on? We, uh, uh, for that, we came up, we identified uh, lack of documentation uh, as one reason. So we came up with uh, an activity called Textbook Companion, uh, in which students from across the country uh, write code for example, Scilab is an open source software. Uh, on Scilab, for every solved example of a textbook, they write the Scilab code. If you do it for the whole book, then it becomes a textbook companion. Uh, we have done a total of uh, close to about 1,000 such textbooks in Scilab, Python, and various other open source software systems that we are promoting. We are also promoting, supporting lab migration if any college wants to by the way, for the textbook companion, for every student who does that, we also pay a honorarium of 10 to, uh, I think, 10 to 15,000 rupees, depending on the quantum of work. And of course, all of these are supported by NMEICT. Uh, we also have a program called Lab Migration. If a college that uses uh, a commercial software and they want to migrate to an open source equivalent, we help them migrate. And then, uh, and of course, uh, not many people know about it and uh, I always ask why only 10, one, only 1,000 textbook companions, why not 10,000 textbook companions? Why only some 50 labs have been migrated, why, why not 1,000 labs? So we have a long way to go but um, we are doing these two, uh, both of them uh, 
have some financial uh, honorarium as a component. We also uh, lately started uh, developing new software, new open source software. Uh, one of the benefits of open source software is that it has open API. It knows, you know exactly how to communicate with outside other uh, outside world. So you can actually put such open source things together and build new ones. So we have, um, uh, I don't know whether we have here, some of the things are there, uh, Scilab, Python, DWSIM, um, free EDA or eSIM, it's an electronic design automation tool and uh, so on. Um, so this is one area, uh, this is uh, open form, which is an equivalent of uh, Fluent uh, for computational fluid dynamics, uh, optimization tools. There are many things, we have a total of 15 uh, PIs uh, who are uh, uh, partnering this project. Uh, so I'm only representing one of them. Uh, of course, on third and fourth, we have this Scilab Audino workshop. Uh, are there uh, FOSSI uh, staff members here? If so, I would want them to stand. We have uh, one, we have two people. Um, we have, oh, sorry, we have third person. We have some more. Uh, yeah, actually, I think by the time uh, the software people sleep uh, late and get up uh, late, <laughs> and when they come here, they probably found the hall full, <laughs> and they have no space. They are they're all outside. So uh, we will. Uh, um, so we will move on. Oh, thank you. We'll move on from FASI. Uh, <laughs> yeah, as I mentioned earlier, um, I forgot to include virtual labs in that list. Uh, and Professor uh, Santosh Narona is here. I would want him to uh, briefly uh, talk about uh, virtual labs. And if there are partners who have come here, okay. So we'll ask after you. Yeah. So the virtual labs project uh, is an attempt to um, improve on the state of lab education in uh, engineering departments in the other uh, colleges around us. Um, the context is that many colleges have uh, very poor infrastructure when it comes to labs, and uh, conversely, uh, the ITs, the ITs have. Um, uh, fairly uh, a high-tech lab infrastructure which is underutilized. So one of the things that the ministry asked us was whether we could work out a paradigm wherein our labs are kept online 24-7 so that people can remote log in uh, from various colleges and access and control gadgets on campus here and then execute certain tasks on these towards learning specific concepts. So this uh, started as an initiative uh, uh, three to four years ago, and we have gone through uh, a variety of uh, phases, pilot and uh, later on a rollout phase, where we have worked out the paradigm by which people engage and connect to us, either to execute simulator-based uh, concept learning or else uh, the actual control of uh, remote trigger devices. So these remote trigger devices uh, range from being small-scale gadgets to actual uh, apparatus that people are likely to find on a plant floor later on when they migrate into uh, being full-fledged uh, engineers. So uh, in executing this, we have had to look at the uh, ways of uh, executing uh, large-scale software rollout from a cloud so that a large number of students can simultaneously access and learn these concepts. We have had to figure out how these uh, interconnect with, uh, for example, the content developed by the NPTEL program where you get access to video lectures. So in effect, uh, you see a paradigm where somebody uh, looks at a video lecture for 15 minutes pauses, then goes and executes a lab online using the virtual lab paradigm. Therefore, that concept is reinforced immediately. Okay, and then you go back and resume watching the video lecture. We have started actually uh, utilizing such a scheme in our own uh, uh, lectures on campus itself. And as a paradigm, we think it works well. Um, the phase we are in right now is uh, that of a rollout. So we have um, a large number of colleges whom we have adopted as nodal centers. These nodal centers in the longer term are expected to in turn roll out virtual labs to other colleges around them. So for example, in Maharashtra, we have about 25 nodal centers which have uh, picked up content. And we now have, uh, between uh, the initial set of 12 institutes which collaborated in setting up content, we have order of uh, 100 labs, and therefore 1,000 experiments across these 100 labs in the various engineering and science disciplines available for learning. So it's ultimately a matter <coughs> of deciding on the basket of labs that they wish to deploy, given their particular university syllabus. Okay, and uh, they end up uh, picking and choosing uh, uh, specific experiments 
for execution as and when uh, they wish to uh, uh, deploy these in their curriculum. Uh, for the hardware triggered experiments, we have worked out a slot booking scheme so people can actually book well in advance a slot. It could be in the middle of the night where you might want to take an experiment sitting from your hostel room in the middle of the night. Uh, it's a paradigm which uh, has worked well. The nodal centers in turn are steadily being incentivized into uh, not just deploying content but also creating content and uh, that's the next generation of virtual labs which will hopefully roll out in the next few years. So there is a website for this, the vlab.co.in site. There are, as I said, 12 partnering institutes mostly uh, the IITs which have uh, created content, but steadily it's uh, now moving into the domain of other engineering colleges stepping up, rolling out content and also creating new content. Are there VLABs? Uh, so I think we've got the coordinators, uh, the uh, Pushpadeeps around, I know not clear, but so we have a large number of uh, engineering students as well join us in from other colleges as interns, either in improving the quality of content already created or assisting in uh, 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 ensuring that everything is ported to a uh, free and open source uh, framework. Uh, I should also add that one of the FOSI projects is on uh, the development of a replacement for a tool called LabVIEW, which is used in, uh, uh, which, which is typically required for data acquisition and control purposes. So we're looking therefore at a paradigm wherein both software and ultimately hardware at very low cost is going to be made available as blueprints for other colleges to adopt in terms of uh, ultimately setting up their own infrastructure for lab education. <coughs> Thank you.